Hey guys, it's Eddie here from Delene Property. Property investor, 26 years old and I have 13 properties under my belt. Uh, today I am talking to you about cross collateralization and cross securitizing properties within your portfolio together. I speak to a lot of people on a day to day basis and most people have no idea what cross collateralization means. Um, I'm gonna explain a little bit about what it is, what is the downside of it, what's the pros, what's the cons, and except in my, my experience with you know building my portfolio. Um, what cross collateralization is, is say if you have one property and you go to your bank or broker and they say you can borrow, use your equity to purchase another property, but you can you know, borrow 100% of that next property value. So say for example, you've got one property ready and you're buying an investment property for um, say $300,000, and they say you can borrow 100% of that property value. So you say your new loan for the next investment property would be $300,000 or it might be, you know, plus 5% or 10%, etc. for stamp duty and legal fees and everything. So they, could, they say you can borrow 100% of the property value plus enough for the, um, the legals and the stamp duty and everything. So your loan might be 300 or might be 315 or, or whatever. But basically, you're using the equity within your property to borrow the full amount for the next property, which the downside of that is means the loans are basically stuck together. That means that from a finance side of things, it would be with the same bank. Say you went to one bank to purchase the other property, and then now you're buying another property with the same bank, and then you let you borrow 100% of the property. The downside of that is from my experience, and I read, uh, I've ran into these problems firsthand, because the first three properties that I bought out of my 13 properties that I have at the moment, um, the bank that I was with, I just went to one of the, ma the major four banks and just went straight to the bank and they used one, used, you know, the equity um, and cr some cross collateralized, you know, some pr pretty much my first few properties. And I didn't know what I was doing at the time. I didn't know the ramifications of it, the downsides and, and except that kind of stuff. But um, really quickly, the downside of cross collateralizations, if I can <laughs> pronounce it properly, is that say for example, if one property goes up by hundred thousand dollars, and you know you want to sell that property to, you know, get the cash and do something with it. Um, so if you want to sell the property, you think you're going to pocket hundred thousand dollars. If for whatever reason the other property has gone down in value, or you know if the loan, if you borrowed hundred percent of it. And you know maybe say the same or, or whatever the, whatever the case is, um, they might not allow you to, you know, pocket that hundred thousand dollars. They might say because of your loan to value ratio is out on this property and you borrowed more than that, then we've got to take you know a large portion of that hundred thousand dollar profit that you made on this one to put on that one because you've used that equity to use that property to purchase this one and that property is going guarantor for that other property. So. It is a little bit complicated, but it has a lot to do with um, LVRs, which is loan to value ratio. Um, I often put a lot of things on, on Facebook and, and that kind of stuff about you know cross collateralization, but it's something to definitely look, look more into if you're looking to grow a portfolio. I've crossed you know a couple properties together once or twice when I've when I've got stuck as a as a last resort since then. But if you you know, are crossing four, five, six, seven, eight properties together, that's something that, you know, you, you risk your whole portfolio if some, something goes bad. It gives you, doesn't give you that quite exit strategy. And yeah, it's, it's something to be avoided if possible. In saying that, if you have crossed, you know, a bunch of properties, don't, you know, think it's all doom and gloom and think that, you know, it's the end of the world. It's definitely not. It can, you can uncross, uh, collateralize your properties. Um, you know, I've, I've spoken with people when I myself have, have had, you know, three properties uncrossed before and then they've all stood, stood separately. Um, yeah, so it's, you know, definitely don't think it's the end of the world if you have done that and, um, you know, think that you, you can't fix it. You can definitely fix it. Um, yeah. So if you have any questions more about this, if you want to, you know, find out more or anything else from, but just but once again, this is not financial advice, it's just from my experience with purchasing 13 properties. Um, yeah, get in touch with us, send us an email and always happy to have a chat. So thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you next video.